Now at 11, a terror attack in London while the country still mourns people killed in Manchester. We have the very latest on the situation in the UK. Nearly a half dozen rallies planned in Portland for tomorrow. How police are preparing and what you need to know to stay safe. Plus a major move out of Portland's downtown core where the homeless campers who called Right to Dream 2 home will go now. This is KGW News at 11. Six dead, nearly 50 hurt in what police are calling a terror attack in London. A driver plowing into pedestrians on the London Bridge as other men with knives attack people at a nearby market. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Nina Melhoff. Officials say three attackers were shot and killed by police. The city's mayor calling it a horrific terrorist attack less than two weeks after another terror attack just a few hours away in Manchester. NBC's Chris Pallone has the latest. It started on London Bridge after 10 local time. Witnesses say a white van swerved into the crowd of people walking across the bridge, mowing down everyone in its path. Yeah, I saw people running, screaming, somebody was injured. I see people with some blood. Moments later, reports of men stabbing patrons with large knives at Borough Market, a gathering spot crowded with people out to eat and drink on a Saturday night. I just saw suddenly loads of people run away from the market and there was people lying on the ground and there was a taxi driver who had a sort of window down who was really shouting at people to, to run. Uh, we ran for like 100 metres and then sort of loads of police cars turned up and there was kind of a period of quite intense gunfire. Up three guys on the opposite side of the road and they was running up and they started stabbing this woman. She was going, help me, help me, and I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing. Videos posted to social media show police evacuating restaurants and screaming for patrons to get down. Witnesses say patrons threw glasses and used chairs to hold the attackers at bay. Metropolitan police say they shot and killed three attackers who were wearing fake bomb devices. Now the race is on to figure out who is responsible. There's nothing to tell us right now whether or not this was really the work of an organized terrorist group like ISIS or whether this is simply, you know, followers. President Trump has been briefed. He tweeted, we are with you to the people of London, but not before making a renewed pitch for his travel ban for six majority Muslim countries. Chris Pallone, NBC News. It has been a tough week in Portland as the city copes with the double murder on a max train a little over a week ago. But tonight, hundreds of thousands of people were downtown to come together for a little fun. KGW's Art Edwards is live along the Starlight Parade route and just wrapped up here at 12th and Taylor. How was it, Art? Oh, you know, it's been fantastic out here, and we're still seeing some of the parade come by. Band just came through a minute ago. Still, lots of people who are out here enjoying this. You know, it has been great weather because we haven't had any rain out here, and everybody has really been excited about this. Uh, we have some video from when the parade first started, so you can get a sense of what it was like at the very start of the parade over on Burnside, and then it's just been making its way all through town throughout the evening. You know, people have said that uh, when we talked to them that this was something that they really needed after everything that's been going on here in Portland. We see you come out for the parade. Yes. Uh, how has it been out here tonight? You know what? We just got here. This is my first time. I lived in Portland for 20 years. This is my first time out to check out the parade. My sister's in town from Alaska. Just uh, out to enjoy the community. So, yeah. Does it feel like this is uh, the kind of thing we need right now with everything? I, def I definitely do. I definitely do. So it's, it's good to see, you know, people coming together, you know, pulling together as a, as a community, as a city. So it's good, definitely. You came out for the parade? Yes, yes, we did. Enjoying it? We are Absolutely. loving it. We are loving it. It's a it's beautiful, a beautiful day. day. Excellent beautiful. bands. We're here to see the bands. Yeah, so we're very excited about them. After everything that's been going on in Portland you know, last week and, and all the protests scheduled for tomorrow, Feel like you need something like this to make things feel yeah, better. it's uh, Absolutely. yeah, it's uh, it's nice to see everybody kind of come down here and be together and still have fun, you know, kind of put things aside. The city has done an excellent job with their uh, with the uh, police force and everything, keeping it all very organized, and that's been very nice, comforting, yeah. very comforting, comforting. Yeah. very absolutely very comforting. Yeah. You know, we heard that from a lot of people. They said it was comforting. They said it was great that everybody had gotten together out here. And they really do believe uh, that this was something that they needed to uh, really start to begin to feel much better about the city of Portland and how things are going. Back to you.
Gotta love the Rose Festival. All right, Art, thank you so much. <laughs> Portland police gearing up for another busy day downtown tomorrow. They say if you can avoid downtown, five rallies are planned to start between 11 and 2 all around City Hall. Some build themselves as peaceful gatherings against hate, and according to police, others are encouraging confrontation. Free speech may be part of the general theme of some of these rallies planned for Sunday afternoon in downtown Portland, but police are worried that some groups are inviting well-known activists who have incited fights and clashes at other protests nationally. We don't want to see people get hurt, and when you have people, you know, advertising they're going to bring weapons and they're expecting to fight, you know, we want to interdict that and stop that before it happens. In April, TriMet murder suspect Jeremy Christian was at a rally sponsored by the same group planning a pro-Trump rally Sunday. The leader says Christian was not part of their group and told to leave. Yael El Asadi told us last night he leads a group of the exact opposite viewpoint. He's with Portland Stands United Against Hate, who is planning a peaceful rally directly across the street. We stand uh, against the racist hate, bigotry, and violence of the far right. Uh, this is a peaceful protest. Um, uh, but we feel it's absolutely important because of the recent, recent growth of the far right. He says over a thousand people are expected at City Hall. An anti-fascist group will also gather a block away. All of these mindsets and free speech so close together is feared to bring a dangerous element to downtown. One of Portland's most high-profile homeless camps now has a new home, Right to Dream 2, which has been occupying a lot in Old Town Chinatown for six years, is now across the river near the Moda Center. For much of the time since R2-D2 first opened at 4th and Burnside, the city has been trying to find a replacement site. After several ideas that failed to come through, city leaders settled on the new lot in April. The camp's future, though, on that side isn't solid. Campers are only guaranteed this spot until October, when the city's current state of emergency expires. After that, the deal will have to be renewed. New tonight, police searching for two men who robbed a Southeast Portland bar early this morning and hurt a bartender in the process. Check it out. It happened at the Lots of Luck Bar and Grill on Southeast Powell and 22nd around 2 this morning. On surveillance tape, you can see two guys run in. One had a gun, another a knife. Then the video shows the guy jump over the bar, knock down the bartender, then drag her to the cash register where he got money. But that bartender, scared out of her mind, had the thought to hit the secret hold-up button that calls 911. At the moment, I was looking at the button. I looked at him. I kept looking at the button, and I looked back at him. His head was down, and I just went for it. Then he automatically noticed I hit the button, and he said, she hit the button, she hit the button. We got to get out of here, and he punched me twice and then ran. She has bumps and bruises and is shaken up, but is okay. The two guys wore dark hooded sweatshirts, and police couldn't find any sign of them in the Brooklyn neighborhood. Take a look. If you recognize these outfits, call police. Still ahead, it has been a rough couple of years for Detroit Lake, and now that it's finally full again, another problem could keep people away. Why health experts are warning you to maybe stay out of the water. And it took a little while, but we did get some sun breaks this evening, made for a pretty nice night. We will see the return of clouds tomorrow, but then I do think we have a mostly sunny afternoon. We'll tell you about that coming up.